Hey, welcome to the channel Yoga with THB. Before moving forward, make sure to subscribe the channel for getting videos on psychological, physical and educational information. And if you are already a subscriber, then click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get notified of our future videos. Before you introduce yourself, the child was a smaller version of adult. प्याजे वो फर्स्ट थेरेस था जिसने इंट्रोड्यूस करवाया कि बच्चे जो हैं वो अडल्ट से यानी चिल्ड्रन अडल्ट से डिफरेंट सोचते हैं और बेस्ड ऑन ऑब्जर्वेशन उसने ये कंक्लूड किया कि जो बच्चे हैं वो बड़ों से कम अक्लमंद नहीं होते लेकिन फर्क सिर्फ इतना है कि वो सिंपली थिंक डिफरेंट वो डिफरेंटली सोचते और समझते हैं चीजों को क्योंकि वर्ल्ड को डिफरेंट तरह से In this mountains game, you really get a sense that children aren't just little adults. They often see the world in surprising ways. Here, the adult and child sit at opposite sides of the table. They can see one side of the mountain scene in front of them. Once they've had a chance to look at the mountain, the adult asks the child to point to which of the four mountain scenes that the adult can see. This requires children to think about the mountain scene from another person's perspective. Often, younger children like five-year-old Brayden, they point to the mountain scene that corresponds with their own perspectives of the mountains and not the adults. However, a few years can make all the difference. Delaney, who is eight years old, can take someone else's perspective more easily. And instead of pointing to the scene from her own perspective, she points to the mountain scene that the adult can see. This game really shows how often children think about and see the world differently than adults. But this is a normal process where children develop what's called a theory of mind or the ability to see something from someone else's perspective. जल्दी से सीखने के प्रोसेस में उन प्रोसेस को तय करते हैं और वो तो इनको छोटे साइंटिस्ट भी कहता है क्योंकि ये हर वक्त डिफरेंट एक्सपेरिमेंट्स करते रहते हैं और डिफरेंट नई नई चीजों को सीखने के लिए डिफरेंट तरीके इस्तेमाल करते रहते हैं और बड़ों से ज़्यादा जल्दी रिएक्ट भी करते हैं तो इस हवाले से हम लोग इस थेरी को जरा डिटेल में देखते हैं थ्रू इस इन एक्सपेरिमेंट्स के Jean Piaget proposed a comprehensive theory of child cognitive development, identifying four major periods or stages of cognitive development. The first of these stages, the sensory motor stage, spans the age range from birth to two years. During the sensory motor stage, infants learn to coordinate sensory information and motor activity becoming increasingly able to act purposefully on their environments and solve problems. At the beginning of the sensory motor period, an infant's actions are confined to innate reflexes, like sucking and grasping. Soon, however, infants will begin to show what Piaget called primary circular reactions. One week old Aiden moves his hand near his mouth by chance. In the next few weeks, he will begin to try to reproduce this pleasurable experience, eventually sucking his thumb or hand purposefully. Jessapina, who is two months old, has learned that it is interesting to open and close her own hands near her face. While primary circular reactions center on a child's own body, secondary circular reactions involve making interesting things happen in the world outside one's body. By chance, six-week-old Isolin causes the toy on the side of her bouncy seat to move but quickly figures out how to keep it going. And five-month-old James, again by chance, pushes a button on his toy and causes music to play.
After several attempts, he is able to make the music start again at his own discretion. Unlike primary circular reactions, secondary circular reactions are not based on reflexes, but represent the first acquired adaptations of new behaviors. At about eight months of age, children show the first signs of planned, intentional behavior. Nine-month-old Hayden, for example, drops one toy to grasp another. Can you get big kisses? Can you give it? Oh, you want to eat the box. You want to eat the box. No, nope, back to the number. He also figures out how to move an obstacle, the exorcer, to pick up a desired toy. Before this, secondary reactions were executed for their own sake. Now, Hayden has learned that one secondary circular reaction can be used in the service of another. Hayden now uses two previously acquired schemes in coordination to achieve a goal, dropping one toy to grasp another and moving an obstacle to retrieve a toy. Tertiary circular reactions occur between 12 and 18 months of age. At this stage, infants begin to actively experiment with the world, to do things just to see what will happen. Tess, for example, tries a number of locations for the teething ring, ending up wearing it as a bracelet. The development of object permanence is one of the more notable cognitive changes occurring during the sensory motor period. Children younger than about four months of age are unaware that objects continue to exist when they are no longer visible. Two-month-old Jessapina does not even look for the toy when it is hidden. Between four and eight months, however, infants begin to retrieve objects that are partially hidden behind a barrier, as six-month-old Anthony demonstrates. By 8 to 12 months, infants begin to show clearer signs of object concepts, consistently looking for objects when they are hidden. Under her hat. Tess, a 20-month-old, reaches right around a barrier to get to a toy, showing that she has achieved object permanence. Being able to represent objects mentally is an important cognitive change as it allows children to think about things they can't see or touch using insight and mental experimentation for solving problems instead of trial and error. Uh, begin to think symbolically and learn to use words or pivo ilfas ka istamal karna sikta hai or the sphero ko summers the way character ko summers the way objects ke zriye represent karta hai unko. Isme hamlok ye different tara ke points ko discuss karenge abhi jo hamlok experiments ko dekne ja rahe hai to haan se hamlok beta trike seek sakenge. According to Jean Piaget, children enter the pre-operational stage of cognitive development during the preschool years. Their thinking changes dramatically in that they now have the capacity to think symbolically, using words or objects to represent something else. Mom, Joshua, 
Sarah and Jill dress up and have a tea party. Later, they feed their doll. Four-year-old Jared pretends he is a spy kid and chooses an appropriate costume. What are you going to be? Um, a spy kid. I think you should have dinner with them. Todd and Jared show further increases in mental representation. They are engaged in what Piaget called symbolic play clearly imagining that the blocks they are playing with are something else. In this case, a building. It's a big building? Yeah, we're going to go in it. Oh, I'm going to put one on. Despite these increases in cognitive skills, the thought processes of pre-operational children result in characteristic errors in reasoning. One of the most easily observed efficiencies is the tendency to view the world only from one's own perspective, a phenomenon that Piaget termed egocentrism. Because of egocentric thinking, pre-operational children hide by covering their eyes or only parts of their bodies, believing that if they can't see the seeker, then they themselves can't be seen. Other pre-operational reasoning errors result from thinking that is intuitive rather than logical. For example, preschool children are incapable of conservation. They do not understand that certain properties of objects, such as volume or mass, do not change just because the superficial appearance of the object changes. When given two of Piaget's famous conservation tasks, Olivia, Deborah, Jacob, Christopher, and Jack illustrate this lack of understanding. Is there the same amount in each one of those glasses? Okay, now I'm going to take this one. I'm going to pour it right in here. Is there the same amount in each glass now? No. Which one has more? So this one has more than this one. I'd say. If that one is bigger than and that one smaller, that one has the most. Does that look like the same amount of Play-Doh? Each one's the same one? Okay. I'm going to go like this. Let's wash it down like that. Now, does that look like it's the same amount still? Which one's more? That one. Mm, that one. This one. This one. Pre-operational children are not only tied to their perceptions, they are also unable to decenter their thinking or think about more than one aspect of a problem at a time. Their thinking also shows what Piaget called irreversibility. They are unable to reverse or mentally undo an action. The following responses to the question, why do they no longer have the same amount, illustrate these limitations in pre-operational thinking. Debra, age three. Because it's tall. Christopher, age four and a half. Because this one's higher than this one. Jack, age five. Because this one's low and this one's tall. Olivia, age three. That one is that. That one is that. Debra, age three. Because it's squish. Jacob, age four. Because you smushed that one down and that one and not that one. That one has the most. As children move into the concrete operational stage of middle childhood, they are no longer fooled by appearances. Pre-operational uh, stage ke baad, concrete operational stage jo start hoti hai 7 to 11 years tak. Is age mein jo bachcha hai wo bahut zyada concerned hota hai aur integration of stability of his cognitive system. Ki wo kis tarah se stability करता है और इंटीग्रेट करता है अपने कॉग्निटिव सिस्टम के साथ इसमें वो लर्न करता है ऐड कैसे करते हैं सब्सट्रैक्शन कैसे करते हैं मल्टीप्लिकेशन एंड डिवीजन को सीखता है और इसके साथ साथ ही उसकी जो पोजीशन है वो अब कंक्रीट ऑब्जेक्ट यानी
तो ये चाहे इसकी ये ग्यारह साल से फिर ऑनवर्ड आगे चलती रहती है थ्रू ऑफ द लाइफ इसमें जो इम्पोर्टेंट कोगनेटिव अटेनमेंट मतलब बच्चा जो हासिल करता है इस एरिज में वो एबिलिटी टू थिंक अबाउट द हाइपोथेटिकल पॉसिबिलिटीज यानी उसको अगर कोई प्रॉब्लम दी जाए This is the final stage of Piaget's theory. This is where adolescents can apply logical thought to abstract problems. This includes hypothetical deductive reasoning, the scientific method, and philosophy. This is Chloe. She's 14 years old. Here Chloe focuses on a problem that requires her to use inductive and deductive reasoning. Suppose your portable music device fails to switch on. Uh My hypothesis is if it doesn't turn on then it's probably dead and you need to plug it back in. My logic behind this is that if it's dead then it can't turn off and it needs to be plugged in. My prediction is that when it's plugged in it will turn back on and if it doesn't then something else is wrong with it. And the experiment is after plugging it in if it still doesn't turn on then something else is wrong with it. Well guys thank you so very much for joining the yoga with THB and this was all about the uh, cognitive development of Jane Piaget I hope ki aap logon ko samajh aa chuki hogi if there is any kind of question you can contact me through my whatsapp or email have a very good day and thank you very much